guys, welcome to Foam TV. My name is Foam Gle. Hi, it's Kelly Olavisi, the fun lady, and you are welcome back to another amazing, interesting, and educative video. <laughs> Hello guys, join us this Sunday, the 1st of August 2021 by 5 p.m. as we go live on YouTube to discuss catfish business. Now you're going to be looking at making headways in the catfish value chain. So two persons are going to be joining us on the show this Sunday. The farm lady from Nigeria and I'm from Henny from Ghana. Hello, good evening everyone. Welcome back again to the Cartoon Sham Enterprise. And today we are going to be having two persons joining us in the live session this evening. Now we have the farm lady and I'm from Henny from Ghana. They are already on the backstage. So shortly we are going to bring them on the show tonight. And we're going to be speaking on the Cartoon Sham business. Now, so many persons want to venture into the Cartoon farming. And they have been asking different questions concerning the hike and the prices of the catfish. Okay, what can I do with the current hike in price? Well, if I sell, can I make profit out of the business? So today we are going to be looking at the different areas in the catfish farm business, different niche you can venture into, and different areas that are profitable in the value chain. So just stay tuned with us as we bring on the guests in the show this evening. Welcome to Foam TV. My name is Foam Green. Hi, it's Kelly Olavisi, the fun lady, and you are welcome back to another amazing, interesting, and educative video. Hello, guys. Join us this Sunday, the 1st of August 2021 by 5 p.m. as we go live on YouTube to discuss catfish business. Now you're going to be looking at making headways in the catfish value chain. So two persons are going to be joining us on the show this Sunday. The farm lady from Nigeria and I'm from Henny from Ghana. So, hello, good evening. The family. Hi, happy, happy evening. Happy evening. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing cool. So, I'm Henry. He'll be joining us shortly, but before he joins us, we'll just go on and he would join us in the course of the session this evening. So, it's okay. good to have you back again in the live show. Yeah. You have been here before and you did great justice. Even today, someone dropped a comment uh, in our previous live session. He was asking some questions. So I say we are having you back again today. You should be online okay. and you'll be available to attend to any questions you have to ask. Yeah, okay. she's a wonderful person. So Abom Henny is already on the background, so I'm adding him to join us shortly now. Okay, he's here with us. Hello, good evening. Hello, bro. Ah, oh, good evening. Hello, fam lady. Hi. How are you doing? You are well, doing I'm great. great. I'm so sorry, guys. I came in late. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. You know, the last time we met, you we talked about having more persons joining us, and thank God yes. today the reality we have we have the fam lady together with us, and we hope to have more persons joining us in this session yeah. as we progress. So it's a good one having you guys with us in this session tonight and like yes. a comment i saw on facebook about a post he says it's an intelligent collabo so having both of you is really an intelligent collabo and wow. it's a session wow. no one will want to miss so it's, it's a great one here. yeah Amazing. So, an introduction i know most persons will know you already but just a brief intro 
we'll start with the farm lady then and from here you would give us an intro as we proceed okay. okay good evening good afternoon good morning everyone i don't know where you're watching from i'm shikemi or labisi the farm lady i'm a nigerian and i'm a catfish farmer and also a youtuber so that is all about me <laughs> Okay, um, over to you, sir. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, over to you. Okay, so I mean, I guess people, a lot, a lot of people know us on this channel already. Uh, I mean, yeah. with Farm Lady and Kenneth. My name is Fomo Hine. I'm also from Ghana. Uh, I'm into catfish farming. I'm into other sorts of farming too. And we are trying to promote, you know, the animal farming agenda in Ghana. We are trying to get a lot of youth in Ghana into farming. We are trying to encourage the youth into going into farming as another sort of getting income and not, you know, being dependent on only, you know, white color jobs or expecting the government to kind of provide for them. So that for me that is my agenda that's why i do what i do can i think your your mic is not coming yeah your mic is not working okay is it working now yeah okay yes i said briefly we'll proceed for what we have tonight it's a it's a huge discussion so and the time available we might not be able to exhaust that. So we just have to proceed. Yeah. So I would yeah, save the time. So we are looking at making headways in the catfish farm industry. Now I was in a meeting okay. in Oyo State, Ibadan in Nigeria. Now in this meeting, we are we are catfish farmers. My last video I uploaded was just a snip video I got from the meeting. Now it was majorly on certain prices for the catfish. So many farmers have been complaining of the high cost of feed, how it have affected their sales. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, they have these middlemen that buy from the farmers and resell to maybe the final consumers or those in the market. So most times, these middlemen tend to detect the prices when it comes to how they buy from the farmers. And these yeah. prices also affect the farmers because now the cost of feed is high. Now, the price that they sell is not that high to meet up with the high cost of feed, not only the feed, the cost of production. Now, you, you include both logistics, you include both, maybe the, if you have persons working with you, you are paying them. And also cost of living is also rising here in Nigeria. I don't know about that for Ghana. So all these are factors that have really affected the cartesian business presently today. So most of the farmers are looking at alternative sources to, okay, how can I still stay in this business and I still make profits out of this business? So, so what we are looking at today is the, the, the value chain is broad. We have different areas where someone can, okay, want to yeah. go into and yeah. still make profits in the business. So we are going to be discussing the various ways. Catfish farming is a broad business altogether. So one, I was discussing that day in the, in the meeting. I was telling them that, yes, cartridge farming is now a business. It's not as before where someone just get a pond, put fishes there, and there is no accountability, there is no documentation. Now we document what we do, we account for everything we do. So all those things will now have to help us to know our profitability in the business. So we want to know, okay, different areas we can venture into, how can we succeed in these areas, and what are the prospects in any of these value chain and catfish and business? So would I want our guests to share more light. We know you guys have been in the industry and you have a lot to discuss with new, new persons coming in and even old persons in the business that are looking for ways to navigate or an alternative source still in the cartridge farm business. So thank you very much. I would give you the audience to speak. Maybe we'll start with the ladies first. Ladies first, okay. as they always say. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. So like you said, cartridge is a business. Cartridge farming is a business. I usually like to refer to it as the catfish business because it's quite broad. 
it's serious business as we all know it it's no longer a joke and mm. one thing i notice these days is that people go into it because they think it's just something that you can do anyhow is something that is easy it's it's not that easy it takes a whole lot of things so it's always best for you to know which area suits you best and then position yourself in that area okay so it's not all about i want to have my farm i want to have my farm i want to have my farm it's quite broad the value chains are broad we have um the product based value chain aspect of the value chain we have the service based aspect so it's left to you to decide which aspect can i really function in now when it comes to the product base that is production of probably your fingerlings melange table size you know it's going to take a whole lot of time so do you have the time can you really dedicate time into this whole aspect so you have to really know what aspect for fits you suits your time suits everything about you are you the person that can you know take risk what is your pain threshold when you have um, high mortality how do you take all the are you ready for that are you ready for all that drama because if you are not ready for it if you're not going to um be stable because yes it comes with a whole lot of emotion emotions rather so it's it's a whole lot so if you are not ready for that it's best not to go into it there are people who have experienced like me personally i've experienced a situation whereby we had an outbreak and we lost all our fishes so what do you do in that kind of situation if you're not strong enough then you're definitely not going to go back into business so it's always best to know what aspect you want to go into am i going to be in production am i going to be in the service based area so that is just it basically for me so i don't know if um my brother from ghana has something to say also on that well um farm lady you know for me uh, i i is very um good that kenneth brought this um topic up because mm -hmm. you know normally when we talk about catfish farming people only concentrate on grow out like the mm -hmm. whole the whole focus is on grow out nobody is really looking at the other value chain that we can you know yeah. um, engage in but yeah. if you if you've been in this business for long you also realize that what keeps the business going is actually the value chain so mm -hmm. I when 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 he chose the topic and I, I felt it's a very good way to also open up the space, let people know that we don't we don't all have to go into doing grow out. There are other value chain that you can engage in. So right off the back, let's start from where exactly does this business start from? Mm -hmm. You know, for me, where this business starts from is the the hatching of the fingerlings. So mm -hmm. operating a hatchery. Operating a hatchery is one of the major value chains that anybody can go into. Because most of us who are involved in this business do not hatch our fingerlings ourselves. Myself, I don't hatch fingerlings. But I, I have a trusted person I buy from. So if I tell you how much this person is making only from selling fingerlings, you'll be amazed. Okay, so it's very important that we let people understand that it is not only grow out that we are doing here. So right off the back, number one yeah. is a hatchery. So you can set up a hatchery mm -hmm. yourself and start hatching fingerlings for sale. Yeah. Now we can go into you know what it takes to set up a hatchery, but as Ken said. If we decide to do all of them one after the other, I, I hope that later when questions come, we can answer them. Yeah. But if we decide to go into each one of them one after the other, we might not finish this discussion today. Mm -hmm. But right, mm -hmm. one, number one is setting up a hatchery. Now, when you set up a hatchery, you know you employ people. Um, if it is a small hatchery, that's, that means that you can work on it yourself. But normally, if you want to set up 
a very you know big hatchery that where you can sell fingerlings it has to be to a certain capacity and you might need a hand or two to help mm -hmm. you in the setting up of the hatchery but hatcheries are one of the very aspect driven or skill driven departments or value chains of catfish farming it's not everybody who can just stand up and say i want to do a hatchery yeah. because you need to be trained you need to have the expertise mm -hmm. in hatching yourself so if people are are interested in entering into catfish setting up a hatchery is one of the things like i said um, the person i buy fingerlings from from ghana you'll be amazed it's actually it's a nigerian wow. who has come to live in ghana for close to about 20 years so and that is just, just I, I i hope we can get him on this channel one day to also talk about his experiences that is all he does now hatching yeah. and selling and he's doing very well very very well in that department okay so um I, I don't want to mention all of them i want to start with hatching for now if okay. somebody goes the other way then i also go into the next um, value chain but i believe that what that hatching is one of the value chains that people prospective catfish farmers can target and go into okay thank you very much now when you talked about the hatchery i i, I that is a broad area it's a very large area when it comes to the country that's like the foundation of the catfish farming is the okay. we talk about yeah. the persons in the hatchery there is no grow out so, you know, a lot of persons are dodging. Well, I say they are dodging that area. You know what? They tell you, ah, the, the risk involved in hatchery is higher than grow out. Yeah. Now, someone can just yeah. wake up one morning and decide, I have money. I want to go into cartridge farming. He might not even want a training. He'll just set up a pond, buy juveniles, put in the pond, and start growing it. Now, by chance, yeah. you might make profit at the end. You don't need much training when it comes to the grow out, except maybe there is an outbreak. And you know, in cat yeah. and business, you can do fish for one year without experiencing any disease outbreak, no mortality. They will just be doing fine. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. Sure. It happens. It happens like that. But when it comes to the hash rate, just a little mistake, you can just lose everything. You By lose everything. Just, just a little mistake the water if in grow out the water might not you might not test your water and you do grow out but you can't try that in hash you must you make sure you yeah. test your water because it's if the ph level is either higher or lower it will affect the your hatchery system so a lot of farmers shy away from when it comes to the hatchery system but that is the foundation and like you said the nigerian that you buy from in ghana i know a lot of persons in nigeria they do only hatchery the rare brew stock yeah. and hash. That's that's just their major aspect in catfish, and they make a lot from it. If you want to do a breakdown on hashery alone, if, if you look at one, what they make from hashery, you know that they make a lot from it. Someone that has brew stocks in the pond yeah. of like 300 to 1,000 brew stocks in the pond, even if he does an hashery and loses that set, he'll just sweep it out, rehash again because the brew stock is in his farm. And you know the female, you can still keep them and reuse them yeah. again, not like they are going. So they don't yeah. really spend much when it the comes to the hatchery. And if, to kill. Yes. And even the feeding aspect for the hatchery, the feeding, you know, you don't spend much in feeding them also. Yeah. So but true. these areas is because of the, the it's knowledge, you need high knowledge you're going to it. So I feel in the, the place of learning it, that's why a lot of people share away from it. They don't really have the time to go and learn it properly. That's my own take. That's why a lot of persons shy away from it. Or, will I say the feel is maybe a harder COVID. In doing the grow out, you can just go to work in the morning, come back and feed them, go to work again. But if you are doing the hatchery, you're always with them, you're watching them, you're observing them. I feel that yeah. has been the concern that made a lot of people shy away from the hatchery. So the hatchery is a nice aspect in the catch business. So the family, I don't know whether you have anything to say about in terms of the hatchery business. Hmm. Well, he, he said it all. It's a whole lot. It takes time. It takes money. It takes time and it takes money. Before you can say, oh, I want to go into the archery aspect, then you should be ready to spend time because it's time-based. I remember when I was working with my former company, 
you wake up very late at night to check them. You are up very early to check them. You are always there with them. So if you are ready for that, for those who are watching, then get ready to dedicate time because it is not a joke. Any slight mistake can what lead to the loss of everything that you have. So that is a very good aspect. And then there is money in the hatchery business. There is huge money. All that you need to do is what? Be ready to take your time, be ready to learn, and then success is very close. So that's about it. Okay, okay so have... I actually believe yeah. that okay. those who are into hatches, sometimes I feel they make more money. Uh, they do. Those they, do. Yes, wow. they do. They do. And yeah. They do. They do. Yes. Actually, they yes, yes. But it's it's also not a very easy um um uh, sector or department to enter into because it's a hands-on yes. business. For yes. those of us who yeah, like to move isn't. around a lot, you can't engage in hatchery because you, you no. have to be there. You have to be present um at all the time. Yeah. Um, maybe yeah. um that is um about the hatchery. Um, yeah. I hope that later we can set up a discussion. Let's talk about hatch, hatching because, um, you know, I don't hatch, but I have a, 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 a little experience in hatching. Um, you guys who hatch can also take us through the process and educate us more on, you know, the best, best practices to keep when you are hatching and what you need to do and all of that. But uh, moving on, the next um value chain or department in catfish farming that i believe that um people can enter in and make a lot of money from is the production of feed yeah. actually you know ken when you started you said you, you stated that the prices of feed is ri are rising in nigeria yeah. when when we had our first discussion I think with the farm lady or you can, I, I made it clear that in Ghana, the prices of feed are outrageous. Yeah. And yeah. if you compare the prices of feed in Ghana to the prices of feed in Nigeria, you realize that um, we, are, we are being ripped off in Ghana. But it's like you don't have a choice. Once you want to do it and you can't produce your own feed yourself, you have no other choice than to, you know, um, buy the feed no matter how expensive it is. So... Feed production is one um, department that I would also encourage people to enter in and then um, do because, you know, once you buy catfish, about 60 to 70% of your cost goes to feeding. Yes. If you don't have mm -hmm. any major outbreak or mishappening on your farm, you just put the fingerlings in there and the rest of your journey is feeding them and, you know, working on your water management. So yeah. feeding... Is, is also one of the areas where there's a lot of money in. Unfortunately, or, or the downside is that the capital requirement to enter into the feeding business is quite a little, a little bit on the high side. Because yeah. um, I'm working on a project now where we are trying to set up a feed um, plant, like a feeding production unit. And, you know, mm -hmm. the, the cost of the machines and the equipment that you need to get are quite on the high side. Because, like, if you check online now, you see that even for as low as a 200 um, a kg per hour or 250 kg per hour machine, um, it's going to cost you nowhere between 11000 to $13,000. And for mm -hmm. anybody who is a beginner, and that's 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 the the price in China. Now you have to talk yeah. about mm. shipping. Now you have to talk about clearing. Yeah. So yeah. the cost, the final cost, and the installation, and you know, uh, final set, the final cost becomes a big a, a bit on the higher side for you know young farmers who wants to enter into hatchery, into and catfish farming. But you realize that the profits. If you're able to do that, the profit margin or the gains on that too is huge. Yeah. It's huge because you know it's like nobody's regulating this feed market. So today you go, the price is say a hundred and twenty 
um, Ghana cities. I don't know how much that is in dollars. The next time you go, this woman tells you it is 135. And it's like if you buy, buy. Last two weeks, I, I called a, <laughs> a feed selling company. I, I, I called a feed selling company. I wanted to buy foreign feed copies. And I, I told them I needed a 1.5 mm to 3 mm there. On the phone, this lady told me, oh, it's 300 Ghana cities. Now, I should take 300 Ghana cities in, in Nigeria. It's like uh, uh, about 4,000. I don't know, but I'll, I'll check the rates and let you know. So I drive there the following day myself to, you know, buy the feed. And I get there, the lady says, it's 320. And I'm like, I just called you yesterday. You said it's 300. You say, yes, yes, now it's 320. And if you look at the distance I have traveled to go and buy this feed, I cannot now say oh, because of the 20 cities difference, I won't buy. So feed production is one area that we must actually yeah. encourage people because, you know, competition drives prices down. And because yes. there's not much competition in this industry, I mean, or in this department, that is the feed department, that is why the prices keep going up. Prices keep going up. And all of us, the three of us, we keep advocating for people to get into catfish farming. And once people get into catfish farming, demand for feed will go up. So if yes. there's no corresponding supply, then definitely prices will go up. So I think that feed is one area that people should also look into and get in. Okay. Some lady, you have anything to say on the feed aspect? Wow. Well, for the aspect of feed, I think in order for us to really be able to achieve something, there's going to be need for a lot of collaboration because a single person can't just say, oh, except you have the money in store, but you can't just yeah. say, well, you want to spend um, $10,000 on a milling machine or an extruder and so yeah. many other things like that. So if we're able to collaborate, if we can do that, then it's going to be possible and then profit to be made at the end of the day because it's a whole lot setting it up, employing um, an animal nutritionist or a feed nutritionist and so many other things, sourcing for the feed ingredients, it's a whole lot. So for one to be really successful in this aspect is, is going to need to collaborate with like minds in that area who also have the same vision, the same goal, and then they can achieve it together. So that is that. Okay. Like for the feed industry, like you rightly said, a lot of persons are going into the catfish farm industry, and as they are going into grow out, now the demand for feed increase. Now, for Nigeria, now we can just count how many feed producing company or products we know. Might not the names. The companies are just one or two companies that produce feed that Mm -hmm. Anybody in any state, once you mention those names, they know it. You can talk about Olams, you just know that you know their product. You talk about this, you just yeah. know the product. So there are not much competitions when it comes to the feed market industry. And I feel there's no regulation when it, in terms of the sale of feed. Now, people talk about farmers regulating their price. The price of fish is expensive. But nobody talks about the price of feed. Nobody complains about us. Ah, farmers are increasing the prices. Now, if you check your record from every cycle you do, you see that the prices of feed increases and some the increases are much. Uh, earlier this month, someone yeah. sent me the company price for Olam their feed. So I was in the, I was doing a record, I was doing a spreadsheet for somebody to do an estimate for a price. So I just needed the company price for the feed. So after doing the estimate, I said, let me make a call to confirm the price again. When I confirm the prices, so we are a thousand higher than what was sent earlier. So the prices just change unexpectedly. So these farmers, they just change the prices without no consideration, and nobody's reacting to that. And all mm. this boils down to the farmer themselves. And when you see some persons do now, that's why a lot of persons now look at what are the alternative sources to feeding. And most of the alternative sources to feeding are not really adequate for the fishes. If they want to speak to alternative source, they might not really give yeah. them the exact what they want for the feed. So feeding is an aspect most farmers should look into. I know if very is cost extensive, the cost of setting up a feed plant is high. I've worked with one someone that wanted to set it up. I know the cost involved. 
they want to buy the bargain alone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the bargain alone. I know how much someone spent to do bargain for a feed product from getting the bag and even printing on the bag alone. Only that self will increase your cost of production. So mm -hmm. now all oh yes, all these areas should also be looked into. So I know in the area of feeding is an area whereby once you go into you have a steady market for it. Because a lot of business are going to the catfish business, so you don't look for customers once you produce good feed. Your customers are already there, but it's now, but you need a lot yeah, of collaboration yeah. to start the business. You need to collaborate with a lot of persons, and also source of power is also a limitation in this our own area. I don't know, yeah. Ghana, you guys have a bit stable uh, electricity that area, but this, this our, yeah, our 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 electricity is quite stable. Hey, see, you, you are showing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so for we here, yeah, we have to factor even the power because yes, running the machines, yeah. you need power. So you have to factor yeah. the power in, uh, into it, getting a bigger plant for it, for your production. Mm -hmm. Now the machines, you look into the bagging, the printing of the bags. So all those are also, the cost is also high. So, but what we are looking at now is if, and even the sourcing the raw materials also, you know, most of these raw materials can be sourced locally. Most of the raw materials can be sourced locally. But setting the plant and getting experienced persons in that area is a good one because the market is there. If you go into feed production in catfish, you do it very well. You don't, you won't lack market. That's just the truth. You won't lack market because okay. there's a steady market for you. There's a steady market. I know a lot of warehouses I know that sell feed. You might go there on Monday to buy a feed. If you return there on Thursday, the trailer loads of feed is they, they, they've sold it off. I wonder where yeah, are who are who are buying the feed and it's off. The next week you see they are loading at every time feed is coming and it's loading there and it's being cleared up. So that means there are persons buying the feed. So anybody going into the feed production, it's a good market. If you have the capital to run it, it's a good area for you. In the catfish business. Okay, but yeah, guys, then you, see, okay. you, you okay. spoke okay. about you the prices on. of feed. Okay. Okay, just continue. Since we are on, still on feed, before we take some questions. Okay. Yes, you you spoke. I wanted to chip in. Um, one okay. thing that has been coming to the fore, especially um, people have been calling me and asking me about. Because of the prices of feed, people are being pushed into looking at alternative sources of feeding the catfish. Mm -hmm. And some of these alternative sources, no matter how effective I haven't tried them, but I find them as very uh, misappropriate or um, unethical. I don't know the right words to use, but unhealthy. Let me say unhealthy. Yes. That is the word I want to use because you get people calling you like, um, can we use chicken manure, um, pigs manure to feed the catfish? I'm like, no. You know, there was this experience. I think somebody posted a video on YouTube where they are actually raising chicken on top of the catfish pond. So mm. that the droppings of the chicken goes directly mm. into the pond. To the pond. I don't That's... know how effective that is, but it is very unhealthy. It's a very unhealthy way of eating catfish, you know. It's like, you know, uh, pigs. Uh, somebody called me and I gave them this example, you know. And they said, oh, but somebody's doing it. I'm like, no, it's like raising pigs. You know, when you leave pigs, they can go to the uh, where they dump feces and actually mm -hmm. eat the feces. They will not die. Mm -hmm. But as, let's ask ourselves, is that a healthy way of raising pigs? So it's, it's the same in this catfish scenario. Even though you might um, give them the dropping, they will not die, you know, they might grow. But I don't think it's a very good way or a good form of managing and feeding catfish that we should encourage. And so I just wanted to check that in when we were talking about the feed. Well, that, that, that's, a, that's a great observation because I've seen a lot of persons want to use anything to feed the fishes they'll tell you mm -hmm. if they can eat it they'll grow but that's not mm -hmm. right so now that's we are looking wrong. at training fishes and let it be healthy 
for the, for the final consumers to eat, not just them to grow. The same thing happens when somebody asks me about uh, uh, boosters. Say, is there, do I know any booster you can give your fishes to grow? I say, why use boosters? So all those why? things are just chemicals. Why use boosters mm -hmm. to train your fish? So using boosters to train your fishes, you are putting the health of the person eating the fishes at risk. So most of these at boosters risk, are yeah. chemicals. So you, you, you inject the fishes with chemicals. At the end of the day, the, 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 at the end of the day, you, the fishes will grow big. But once the person consumes the fishes, you are giving the person chemicals, and most of these are carcinogenic. Most of these uh, they cause cancer to human body. So that's why yeah. most of these alternative sources should not be encouraged. Yes, we know that there are other supplements that you can give to them, but first of all, have you tested it to make sure it's hygienic and it's okay? And also, some of them can even cause harm to your farm. You can feed them, and before you know, your, your fishes just start dying. You might not even know the cause. That's it. So there's a question someone asked before we miss that. Okay, Lawan. Okay. Okay, let me there's a question he asked about okay, about hash. Okay, say Lawan Balami. Say, are there any hands-on training program available for Hashley business one can access? So it's asking for training. Someone that wants to go into Hashley, is there a hands-on training that he can assess. Like for the hashery, I, I always say it's not something you just learn online. Hashery is not something mm -hmm. someone just say, yeah, do this, do this. It's preferable you go to the farm and learn it. That, that, that's my yeah. take when it comes to hashery. Something you go to the farm, you stay with the person, and as he's doing it, you are watching, you're observing. Now, like a farm lady, in one of her videos, she talked about observation as one of the key areas in hashery business. If you're, if you're a cashew farmer, you must observe very well. If you, if you look at your fishes and they are not feeding well, you just know that, yes, something is wrong. So, uh, Mr. Lawan, yes, you can contact maybe if a farm close to you that does hatchery very well, they can assist you on a hatchery process. It's something you go to the farm to learn. It's not something you can just easily learn online. You can, after mm -hmm. you have done the physical training you can now maybe online somebody can still guide you that's okay maybe mm -hmm. putting you through some stages but when it comes to learning it first online it's not really advisable if you want to be productive in that aspect okay we can proceed we see our other questions but they might come in with me once we have talked about the different areas so we don't just overshoot Okay, so um, if I, 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 I let me introduce the next department that I also think uh, the Almighty uh, grew out, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's where the majority, if you take uh, the number of people who go into cash farming, I can say that maybe 80 to 90 percent of us are involved in, if you take the industry, 80 to 90 percent of us are involved in growing and uh, doing grounds. You know, wearing catfish either for table size or for melanges. So that is also one area that you can, you know, um, consider entering into. Um, I had I had a call from um, some one lady in Nigeria. His her name is Chioma, and um, she said actually sent me a message that she's been doing grow um, melanges for a while, and she wants to upgrade and do table size. I'm like, mm -hmm. why do you want to make the transition from Melanges to? And she's saying, well, she thinks that the uh, the table size has a better market, and you know, the prices of table sizes are doing better than the Melanges. So, um, I I don't do Melanges. I always do table size. So, I thought well, maybe coming from her, and she sent me pictures of her farm, and I think she was doing very well. And I think that is also one area that we can. Um, look at or consider entering into because if you look at the um, the department of doing or rearing catfish, there's the, I mean we have a lot of people doing that now, but a lot there's a lot more demand, especially in Ghana for instance. There's a lot more demand that we have not been able to um, mm -hmm. satisfy or you know fail. 
So um, that's one area that we, we will still encourage people to do now. People, most people are getting into it themselves, but we will still encourage more people to uh, get into this business of uh, doing grow out for sale. Okay, the farm lady, before you say something about the grow out, I know this is your area, you've done it, and you have <laughs> a lot to say when it comes to the grow out aspect. Yeah, I made a post concerning the live stream on you on Twitter. Then there was this uh, there was this guy from which Zimbabwe. Yes, he's into fish farming, aquaponics. Yeah, so he okay. shared the post. So, so most persons in Zimbabwe we are asking: Is cat fish farm business growing, doing well in Zimbabwe? Is it something they can venture into? So he was like. Persons doing it in Zimbabwe are just few. That is very little that they don't really do catfish farm in Zimbabwe. And I know a lot of African countries that the catfish farm is very low. Now, if you check, Nigeria has the highest when it comes to catfish farm business in yeah. Africa. Nigeria, we do catfish farm very well. We eat it very well here, even the marketing. And even in other countries, like you said, the person hashing for you is in Nigeria. So even other African countries that you see persons doing catfish farming, are mostly Nigerians. I know Ghana is also doing well now when it comes to the country. They are trying also. So, but there are other African countries that the business is not really that blossoming. It's just at its infantry stage when it comes to the country and business. I know there are still opportunities for the business in other areas also. Now, for the mm -hmm. growth, almost 90% or even more than persons in the country and business are into the growth. And I feel this has really been maybe a challenge for, for us here in Nigeria because once we have the, a lot of persons doing the grow out, it also affects the pricing. But I feel now, because since we have a lot of persons doing it, and most persons don't really, well, I say, don't really understand the business aspect of the grow out. They just do the grow out. Well, I say, I, I was telling somebody, you are doing it just for fun because if you can do it and sell at this price, that means you don't, you don't even know how much you spent on it. So since we have a lot of persons doing it, some persons, they just say, ah, since I have money, I have a land, there, there is water there. So let me just dig a pond and start training fishes. And today you go, you just buy one bag, you feed them. The next day you buy 10 bags, you feed them, no record. Now at the time of, at the point of sale, if somebody comes and says, ah, you have 200 kg of fish, you have 300 kg of fish, I will pay you so, so and so amount, I want to buy them. You just be happy, ah, this thing that I just did and the money is coming from me, I will sell for me. So, and that has really affected the price because now when people come to buy and these persons are selling at prices that they didn't even calculate how much they spend. So it affects the main farmers that are doing business because when they have done their calculation and they see that at this price, it can't work. And I see that's what was informed the Ibadan or your state cartridge farmers to come up with a meeting and say, see, let us have a stipulated price for the business. At least so that if there's a price for the business, now, everybody in that our zone must stick to these prices because it was the whole state that came together. They are the group they are serving those zones. If you are staying in this particular area, you are in this zone, and they want to enforce the prices. So that even if you are doing it as for fun, you must also stick to their price. Even if you don't want to make gain, with the price they are setting, that you must make gain. So you don't really hinder the other persons that want to do business in the industry. So in the grow out, I tell persons in the grow out, there's profit in grow out. But if you calculate very well, check yourself. Normally, you should be paying yourself as a farmer. Mm -hmm. Most farmers, well, they, they calculate just their feed. Let's say I spent maybe 100,000 to feed them, and I want to sell it 110,000. They say, I've, I've made 10,000 as profit. But you didn't calculate water you spent. You didn't even pay yourself because you are feeding them for, let's say, four to five months. If you are working, you should be getting salary for each month. All those things we are not maybe put into a record. You just want to, uh, since I have seen my feed money back, I'm okay with it. So it really affects the price. So I don't know the farm lady will have a lot to say when it comes to the grower. That's her area. Okay. So you've said the whole lot. Um, I don't know what to say, but if you want to make profit, you want to make money, that is your aim. At the end of the day, you must have a very good financial budget. Fund I'm going
to use or this is what I'm going to use. So before you start, so if you are not making profit on paper before you start, then you can now make your adjustments before you now there's to have a very good financial budget, calculate your input cost. Calculate every cost your capital has to what and then pass fish. I mean, even the growth, you can't just say any oh, form of training. So get trained, read some books on it, and then do your financial budget. That is the first thing. Do your financial budget, and then you are good to go. You are good to go. Follow the procedure. Follow the the principles that guide having a growth farm. You know you have to change your water. You have to do this. You have to do that. Once you're able to follow all this, religiously then there is nothing stopping you from making profit so this is all i have to say on that since you guys have said almost everything so that is it basically thank you okay there's a question here someone said what is the recommendation on transporting our grow out to other other nearby states with better price for sales in terms of maybe you want to move your grow out from one state to the other in terms of if you want to sell okay what is the recommendation well it, it depends on what state you want to sell them as there are some people who will kill and then freeze it so it depends on what your end customers want. If they want it live then they should be transported in a very good condition. I always I always feel so bad when I see people pack their fish and it's like punishing those fishes. They are under stress and it's yeah. just, imagine you pack human beings like that. So you should also see that if you pack them in such condition, that it's going to affect the quality of the fish at the end of the day. Probably it's for processing or for whatsoever purpose they want to use it for so it's always best to transport them in good conditions good conditions in fact that is another value ch value chain transport the transport system of our cartridge produce is another value chain so if we can have people who can go into this aspect and then take charge of it then transportation of our and then the customers will be happy at the end of the day. We should not be transporting our fishes under heat. It, it won't take us anything to transport them in an air-conditioned environment. Let them be okay. Let them be good so for what they are paying. They know they are getting value for what they are paying. So that is what I feel about transporting our fishes. Always transport them under very good condition. If you have to kill and freeze them, fine. If that one wants and be ready to deliver on it at all times. So that is that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Daniel. Okay, he said, okay, before transporting the fish to another city, calculate the cost of transportation and know if it will be worth it at the end of the day. Yes. Now, before yes, moving your fish to another city, you first of all, you have somebody you are sending it there to, and also you know the price they sell at that place. Mm -hmm. Let's take, for example, you are at, let's say, Portacot, and the price of a fish in Portacot is, let's say, 1000 per kg. For instance, mm -hmm. and the price, in, let's say Ibadan or Lagos is 1,002. And you know, it's okay because Ibadan Lagos is higher than Portacot. You want to move your fishes from Portacot to Lagos. Now, the mm -hmm. cost of transportation, moving them from Portacot to Lagos, might even be higher than higher. what you have, you have sold 1,000 in Portacot. So that's, exactly. that's the factor. And also, you made mention about transportation as a value chain. Yes, yeah, that is really a value chain I've, I've not really seen persons go into. We don't really have persons that into the logistics aspect of catfish farming. The catfish, yeah. 
Now, I've had a lot of persons, if you go on Facebook, you always see a post or a complaint, okay, I bought, let's say, 10,000 juvenile from this person. When they sent it down to me, 9,000, we are dead. My I dead. bought this, and this, we are dead. If that has been a recurrent complaint from so many customers. I, I, yeah. I was thinking somebody, one other time, he was like, ah, that he had a customer in Bonny. He was in a bad and that one time he sent fish to them, something happened and he lost that customer, although he wanted to pay back. And most times a lot of farmers they won't want to pay they won't want to pay you back your money if you lost the yes. fish. Because the fish there was an agreement we made to send it. And mm -hmm. if you watch the way the samples of this fish, they send it through maybe buses, transport companies. Now, mm -hmm. what if on the way this company, maybe the motor fee uh Maybe had a breakdown on the way. A breakdown, yeah. Yes, our roads, the heat and everything, the stress alone. Those fishes, even transporting fishes within a state is difficult than even the interstate. Yeah, so yeah. these persons can come in and they have a van. This van is specifically for transporting of fishes. Now they can be doing interstate yeah. and they, they, they take a percentage from it, both the farmers and both the customer. They serve as an intermediate yeah. to transport the fishes. That is really a good value chain. And they are transporting it in a good and conducive environment for the fishes. They, are, they, are, they don't feel that they are still on, in the pond. So when they get there, they, exactly. are, they are okay and they are sound. And it might, mm -hmm. just, it might just be a little stipend. The farmer will just have to pay or the customer will just have to pay as an extra to get this service being, being rendered to them. And yeah. you know, most times people don't really pay, want to pay for this service. It's like it's just like insurance. Most people mm -hmm. say, why do, why do I need an insurance company for maybe my car? Mm -hmm. When you now have an accident, you be like, ah, if I've known, I would have. I would have gone yes. To, yes, insurance. So make if if an avenue like this comes up, I see farmers or, or persons that want to go into cars should make use of these opportunities to transfer because it saves you more because. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, you might do 10,000 fishes on the way, and the person that you are buying it from will not want to pay you back. You also yes. you are losing money at the end of the day from it. So exactly. It's, yeah, so this is a, is, a, is a good value chain for farmers to engage into the transport mm -hmm. business, how to move fishes from one state to the other in a oh, conducive okay. environment. So that's really a good one. Okay, a question is, okay, what is the best way Okay. So I said, what is the best way to transport and how many hours away is the maximum? So, like, I feel we've answered this in between. Yeah, the, the, the best way to transform is a way whereby the fishes feel they are in the same condition they were in the pond. Now, if exactly. they are outside condition, it's not best for them. They are already stressed. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. You might be lucky they didn't die, but that's not the ideal situation of transporting them. So most of the I see them, they just put them in this 25 gun, add it to water, and, and send them. So that's not really the best way to send your fishes. So that's not the best way. If it's an AC fitted car, yes, and you have maybe a good boat to transport them with, with water inside, yeah. that's the best way. You can use nets to net the top so that they, can, they don't yeah. jump out. Those, yes. other, those ways can work. But sending them just maybe with transport system is not really an ideal way to send your fishes. Okay, okay still I want to say the juvenile we buy in Bruno State comes from Lagos, two days on the road. So sad because many are dead on arrival. Uh, that's just the truth. That's, sending, that's so sad, yeah. Yeah, sending fishes from Lagos to Bruno, it takes time and most times you lose a lot. And at the end of the day, this, those fishes might not, even the ones that survive, might not really do very well. Well, yeah. The ones that will survive might not really do very well. So, sending fishes in that large distance is not really advisable. So that's why I'm getting told. training on hatch. Like most times, somebody will ask a question. Ah, I want to buy juvenile. I want to buy fingerling. I want you to send this from this state to this. So most times, I just look at it. I tell you, it better you buy within your state because we have looked yeah. at. The, the, the I, logistics yes. involved in transporting those fishes from a state to another. We've con considered the bad road network, and there are so many uncertainties that might set in on the road if you are transporting your fishes from yeah. one state to the other. So, if you weigh all those options, you just better you advise the person to buy within a close Fine. proximity if there are persons doing it in that state. And friendly in Nigeria, I know virtually 
in almost all the states, there are persons that do hashering in Nigeria presently now. Sure. I doubt there is a yeah. state where you don't you can't see somebody doing hashering now, at least there will be somebody doing it. So it's better you buy within your state, except the person transporting it to you can assure you of a better, a better the means of getting of the it fish. down to you. Yeah, the safety of the fish, not you, the customer safeguarding your fish. Let the person assure you of the safety. I tell people that. So yes. most persons will come and say, Buy from me. I'm in Lagos. I can send your. I can send fishes down to Akwaibom State for you in a safe <laughs> and sound condition. Now, at the end of the day, if something happens to those fishes, they will They will refund you. That's just it. Yeah, they, they will abscond totally. I don't know. You know that it's not their fault. Too, that when the thing left them, it left in a good condition. They might good condition. They will do a video for you before they put it in the car and send you the video. Now, some a lot of things might happen on the way before it gets to you, and those fishes will die, and they won't want to stand to bear the cost. I've heard a lot of persons mm. complain bitterly about that, that uh, I bought fishes, and before it gets to me, I lost all the fishes. There was a lady, she bought fishes on somebody, that was 1,000 something pieces, and before it got, it was just 36 that survived, 36 pieces that survived. And uh, the person was, mm. each one to refund. He said, no, we can't refund you, this, that, with all sorts of stories, mm. and this is money that's gone. So I advise persons to buy fishes within your environment. Okay, Mr. Alpha, I don't know whether you heard us. She talked about transport as a means, as another value yeah. chain when it comes to the cash business. Yeah, your persons can go into transportation as their own area in business, how to transport fishes from one yeah. city to the other, even from one country. Somebody can decide, okay, if I run a logistics company, I can move fish from Nigeria down to Ghana. What it mm -hmm. entails is getting a van, that can keep these fishes in the same condition. It can this van can contain big boats like a pond, you know, like you know this uh, one thousand liters of uh, rubber white Tank. rubber. It can contain in this big van, and this van is AC fitted vans, and you just have a net over it. The fishes will just be in their pond condition until they get to where they are going, and the farmer and the customer just have to pay a little stipend for that services, and you are sure that you are getting your fishes safe and sound, there is no hitches on the way. Yeah, so I, I, I was backstage, I, I listened in on everything. And I liked what um, the fat lady brought up about even the transportation of catfish being another viable, uh, you know, channel or right. department yes. that people can, uh, value chain that people can go into. You know, um, I also do transport figures a lot because, you know, when people, unfortunately for us, there are not a lot of places that do, you can get um, fingerlings from. So if yes. somebody orders fingerlings from a different region, other than what you are, you have to look. And there are several orders that you have to reject because it is yes. basically mm. impossible, you know, and I don't trust the transportation system enough yes, to just go and give it to the bus. And say and ask the driver to transport fingerlings. No, I don't. I don't trust them enough. So I'd, if it is closer, I'd rather I do the journey myself. And sometimes yeah. you can drive up to say four or five hours just to okay. deliver uh, fingerlings. And by the time you get there, definitely you have casualties on the way. I, I even did yeah. a video on that. Um, I wanted people to understand that look, when the fingerlings come and some are dead, it's not because where we bought them from is not good. But yes. it's because of the long journey and the deplorable roads that we have to transport mm. these fingerlings on. Mm. And that's what costs. So, as you said, if people can, you know, buy um, vans that can do the transportation of these fingerlings, that would be great. That would be fantastic. Um, so that, that's about the transportation. Even with the after sale, after harvesting, if you can get vans fitted with cold rooms that can do the transportation yeah. of um um habitat cafe from one place to the other that will also be fantastic so that's also yeah. an area yeah, that's also an area but you know yeah. talking about the value addition department or value addition chains that we can add one thing that comes offered right after harvesting is smoking smoking yeah. because you know smoke there, there are basically two major ways of you know storing catfish for the long term it's either you are freezing it or you are smoking it 
Mm-hmm. Yes. So smoking is one of the major ways that you can uh, set up as a business in the catfish industry alone, and you can do um, uh, survive on that. There's a company in Ghana that's da- that does only smoking, only smoking, and so for people who want to smoke large quantities of fish for export or for transport transporting to other large um, other different countries. They do that as a business on its own, and they are doing very well. So smoking is mm-hmm. one of the ways that people um, can enter in I mean, the preservation of the catfish industry. Okay, the farm lady. Yeah, he said it already. Smoking, processing, we have a lot of people who are into that already. So you don't have to be on the farm like we've been talking about since. You mm. can go in into the processing aspect okay, smoking yeah. it or freezing it yes when you smoke it you can package it i know they pack it in around 250 grams one kg depending on yeah. what the customers yeah. want and also this aspect requires some level of training so you can't just say i want to start smoking if you don't know how to process this fish properly mm-hmm. you might run at loss at the end oh. of the day so properly degotting the fishes, properly cleaning it, properly smoking it under, because there's a required temperature. You just have to get all these things right. Am I going to use charcoal? Do I want to use gas? So if you can get all this information through training, then success is is, is achievable. So that's, that is that. Yeah, now the smoke, you know, when people say smoking, they just say smoking is roasting the fishes. So they are different things <laughs> smoking your fish and roasting the fishes. Roasting, yeah. yeah. You can just roast it for your own personal consumption. Anyhow it is, you can eat it. But if you want to maybe sell it out, you have to smoke it. It means that to a, to a certain stage. No, there's a certain stage, mm-hmm. you, if you dry the fish to a certain degree, it can't stay for long. Maybe in yeah. one week, the chef life animals, is the chef life. So yeah. you have to smoke it to get so the chef life can be longer. If you intend to sell it, maybe outside your state or maybe to a larger community, because you don't know when the person will intend making use of it. Yeah, yes. I know a lot of people that they just do smoking as their own business. Some of them don't rare the fish, don't rare fishes. What they do, they go to farmers and buy. They can buy one ton from you. They come, they clean it up, they smoke, they package, and they sell. And I, that area is really, is, is, life is making a lot of money for them. Because a lot, if you compare yeah. the price of smoking to the price of the fresh fish, you know that the, the, the prices are The are gap different. is wide. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a wide margin. I was talking with a farmer I met in New York State. So I was going to his son. He was telling me ah, that money he made that he's making from smoking, ah, that is double what is even making from fresh fish itself. And now it's even looking at majoring more on the smoking aspect than even the fresh fish okay. aspect. Because once you can smoke and package, uh, you would really do well. And there are a lot of persons, what they do is that they have this smoking, like they, they, they open, well, I say, a mini, uh, like a company where they smoke for persons. You can carry mm-hmm. your fish down to them. They, do, they smoke it for you at the standard you want. You tell them, okay, this is, they might tell you, I'm the chef life, is it three months, six months. They, they understand the process. So you only just yeah. to bring your fish. They'll help you do the cleaning. They smoke it for you and you pay them. Different amount. They, they, they pay like per kg. Maybe yeah. if you wanted to smoke one kg, for, maybe one kg, there's an amount you just pay them. They do the smoking and do the packaging for you. So that's what they do. So the other person does their work. They just do their smoking and the packaging as their own business also. So the smoking is a good area a lot of farmers can look into. Because once you focus more on just packaging alone or focus more on just uh, grow out alone, you tend to, but if you are doing the smoking also, and one thing about the smoking, one, one thing help the farmers. You know, why type of thing, if you buy 1,000 pieces of fishes, at the time of harvest, not all those 1,000 will get to table size at the same time. You can't get all to table size at maybe say ah, because I bought 1,000 kg. When I want to sell all my 1,000 kg, will be one, one kg, one kg. You can't get no matter the three the technology you want to use, some will just mm-hmm. refuse to grow. 
you are feeding them, they will just say, ah, me, I'm not growing, I'm taking my time to grow. They just take their time to grow. So they won't, they won't grow. You are feeding like you are eating with your mate. Why are you not growing? So they take their time to grow. So, but most times, what some farmers do, they sell those ones that get to table size. Then the ones that are taking their time to grow, they roast them and still sell. Yeah. So that means at each point, you are making money from this and you're also making money from this point. So instead of still keeping those ones that have refused to grow and still feeding them more, you just roast them and you sell them off also. So that's for the roasting size. I saw a question on roasting. Okay, say, okay, where is the best place to identify take off takers for smoked fish in bulk? So you're like a market where you can sell smoked fishes. Smoked fish. Like here in Nigeria, I know, yes. Now most times the smoke fishes, market persons buy. Also, you can work with your networks. You can have, use your you can work with your networks, people on your maybe your social media. You can use your social media as an as a avenue for advert when it comes to the smoke fish. You have the good packaging. You advertise your product online. I know you, you have persons that want to buy from you. Now, there is no, well, I say there is no market like the fresh fish. It's okay. If you go to this market, you meet them and you sell the smoke fish to them. But I know there are persons that buy in box. I know most times fast food, restaurants, hotels, they, they, they buy the smoke fish in bulk. They do it on maybe on contract basis. They have to be supplying me this amount of it. So most times you employ more, more of the adverts. You go meet them and tell them, okay, I have smoked fish. And if your fishes are good, you, would, you just graduate by bit by bit, you will get more clients demanding for that, for the smoked yeah. fish. The family, I don't know whether you have anything to say for the, that area. Yeah, for the market, the market is everywhere, everywhere around you. So it's just left to you to identify your market. At least if you start smoking, start selling to your immediate environment, start selling to your neighbors. Tell, don't be shy to talk. Don't be shy to advertise because nobody is going to feed you at the end of the day. It's just you and yourself. So be proud to spread the word. Be proud to tell people, oh, I smoke fish. I have smoked fish to sell and tell people someone else will tell someone else and then it grows bigger. So don't be shy. Once you're not shy, then there is no way you wouldn't be able to advertise your product. You can go digital. Anyway, anyway, it's, it's possible. It's possible. So that's it. Okay. So like you said, anywhere is possible when it comes to the advert. Now, I tell people, employ more of the social media when it comes to your products. Instead of the farm, don't just limit it to your immediate environment in the one. I say, okay, people are buying from me. So post about your product online. I know see a lot of persons would call you on phone. I know a lot of persons calls, messages, and I know it's that same for most persons in the country. At at least at a daily basis, you get requests or calls. Ah, I need finger lens. I need like you said, there are some requests you just have to reject and say, ah, thank you. Uh, you just <laughs> That's not, you know, in the cartridge business, you can't do all. You, you can't no, meet you up, can't. You can't meet up all the demands you get. If you want to meet them up, you would either, you might run into so many challenges, because you can't really meet up some of the demands. So there's on demand, you just have to refer them, okay, talk to this person, I call this person, because the demands keep coming. I, I, I will thank God, apparently now a lot of persons are showing huge interest when it comes to the cartridge business. A lot of persons are showing huge interest on that. Okay, let's, there's a question before we proceed. It's, okay, you said, earthen pond or trampoline, which is better? The earthen pond or the trampoline? I mean, this, this, this question gets asked a lot. To, I mean, the different <laughs> um, forms of keeping catfish, you know, people call you concrete pond, earthen pond, which one should we do? And I always tell people, each one of them is good based on the purpose for which you want to do it and then the challenges or the disadvantages that each one of them have. You have to understand yeah. this before you choose a particular type that you want to use. So when people mm -hmm. talk about tapoline or the collapsible uh, ponds, I, I ask them, why do you want to use that? 
because if you don't have a permanent place, then the best um, choice for you is the tarpaulin or the collapsible form. Um, if you have mm. a permanent place that you want to set up cafes, mm. from, then you must look at the concrete pond or the um, earthen ponds. You know, normally my challenge with earthen pond is that uh, earthen pond has its own challenges that I always try to explain to people who want to go into earthen ponds. Because working with earthen ponds, it tends to be a little bit more labor intensive than concrete ponds. Even if you take the harvesting, for instance, harvesting uh, catfish in um, concrete ponds is quite easier. You know, you just drain the water, you get somebody in there, they fetch it for you. But if it is earthen pond, you know, getting into the water alone, for me, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's work that I don't want to engage in, honestly. <laughs> so I always advise people. But I, have, I work on earthen ponds too. In fact, most uh, my biggest project that I'm working on now is eighteen points. We have like um, a twenty thousand, five twenty thousand capacity eighteen points. These are huge points, huge yeah. huge points that we are working on. And um, for for the person to have been able to, I, I mean, I will explain to you the advantages, the disadvantages, and all of that. And you know, eighteen points to if you do them that big, they tend to cost a little bit more. But if the person yeah. understands all these things and still decides that, look, these are the advantages and the disadvantages that yeah, you have um, allayed to me. I want to go in for everything else. Perfect. But what I don't encourage is people just see the everything point and they don't know the advantages, they don't know the disadvantages. They just want to do everything point because maybe for them it sounds, it looks better or no. You might enter, you might do it and later not. Um, be too happy with your answer. And sometimes people also do call me and tell me, look, the place where I am is a mushy area. So the only thing that I want to do there is a thin point. And if you have constructed ponds for a while, you see that, especially in the rainy season, or if the mm -hmm. place has still water on it, constructing a thin point is a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. Digging yes. and trying to prevent water from entering where you are. So these are the yeah. challenges that I try to explain to people when it comes to doing a thin point. But each one of them it's good for the purpose that you want to use them for, if you understand the challenges as well. Okay. So the family lady, you have anything to say on that? You've worked, some lady, have, you've worked, your last place of work was an earthen pond, so you should have, yes. you still have yes. more on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it comes, it comes with a whole lot. It comes, though, as we all know, it imitates the natural habitat. When you have a tampon, if it's your space, then you can go for it. And not just going for it, is the place um, okay? Is it prone to flood? Those are the things you are going to check for. Because if it's prone to flood, then I don't think it's going to be a right decision going for a tampon. So all these things you have to put into consideration, have a very good plan. Then you can actually tell, okay, I can go for eating pond, the source of water, because when you have a very big eating pond, I don't know the kind of borehole you are going to use. Probably, except you want to do an industrial borehole, the normal regular borehole won't be able to serve a very big eating pond. It's going yeah. to be a whole lot. So if you have a stream close by, then good for you. You can take advantage of that. But it's not always compulsory. Even people who run the earthen pond system, they don't get good results, some people. So what really matters is your management practices. If you can manage them properly, change their water as that's when you give them good food, then whether you're Using etim for the yari, then you will get your results at the end of the day. So that is about it. Okay. Yeah, the etim pond, and you know, a lot of persons are like uh, Henny said, you should consider your place where you want to keep your farm. Mm -hmm. Is it your permanent site? I tell people, if, if that is not your permanent site, no need doing the etim pond. And also, mm -hmm. if, if you know, you can't do an etim pond in a residential area. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are starting a farm and maybe you just you build your house and you still have some maybe land close by that you want to maybe okay since there is space here let me start up something 
no, I won't advise you to build an ATM pond in that kind of land. Mm -hmm. It's a residential area. You, you have challenges when it comes to waste to dispose your water and so many challenges. If you are not careful, it might even, if, it, if they don't do it, where erosion might eat up the pond and affect the land also and the buildings yeah. surrounding it. So sure. the tampolin pond will be suitable for those kind of areas. Now, but if you are in an area that's, let's say, a wetland area close to a stream, and you want to do the earthen pond, now there are some earthen pond they do now. The, the projects would start very soon, so it's an earthen pond project, and the guy that will be doing working on it, the pond he did last, it's, it's an earthen pond, but the way he constructed it is just like a concrete or a tampoline pond. It has a flow-out system, a flow-through system. You can just mm -hmm. go in, into the pond, on, on your pipe, the water will flush out, now, if maybe something happened and there is enough water in the pond, there are pipes that will flush out the water that there is, even if you are not there, your, your pond cannot overflow. Yeah. It's certain way, there are pipes that once the water gets a certain level, the water starts flushing out on its own. You don't need to be there. The water can't pass that level. And also, there is a reservoir. Let's say if you are building 10 ethane ponds or 5 ethane ponds, they build an extra one for water reservoir. Yeah. Now, they channel the pipe from the reservoir to the different ethan pond whereby you can you can open water from the reservoir to any of your pond now maybe you just have your pond might get maybe like a disease outbreak or something enter the water you can flush out the water immediately and go to the reservoir and channel water back to okay. the pond so, so the construction also of the ethan pond also matters i've seen a lot of persons they just they feel very, pond, they feel ethan <laughs> pond is just digging the ground so they tell you, ah, it's, it's not just to dig. That. It's not just to <laughs> dig, dig. I tell you, earthen pond, the construction of earthen pond they do now is far from what they do before. You just come and dig the ground that you go. Now, they, there are a lot of technicalities when it comes to digging an earthen pond. Essentially, when you want to do in large quantity, if you are mm -hmm. building a large pond, ponds of, let's say, 50 by 30, 50 by 80 by 40, those big ponds, it takes a lot of technicalities because... If anything happens in that pond and there's no right channel to move out water immediately, yeah. to bring in water immediately, you will run into losses. Because yes. something might enter your water and you need to flush out that water. I've seen a lot of ethane pond, they don't have, they can't flush out the water. How they yes. move their water, they will go and get a, a pump. pump machine to start pumping out. <laughs> I say, how will you construct an ethane pond like this? Because if you do it like this, and if you want to harvest, that means you start pumping out water. You want to you at every time you are pumping out water. Incurring more cost. Down, and you, if you construct it with, with a flow out system very well, you can flush out. You just open it and the water will flush out. With flush they do out. it with it very big pipes, so it doesn't even take time. With different channels, the water is off, and you can still bring in water from either of maybe the reservoir that you have into the pond. So that's the construction aspect of it. So. Your, the land where you are, should you consider all those factors before you choose the right pond you want to go into. So someone said, okay, said, uh, okay, you guys are doing well in discussing critical issues in the catfish farming. Okay, so it's okay. So please kindly educate people on the challenges of smell and waste management in residential area. So you're talking about the waste water management in residential areas. Like that's what I just said earlier about mm -hmm. building an earthen pond in a residential area is not advisable because it, it will affect persons living around. And most times, you see a lot of persons, you go to their farm, right from the junction, you just know there is a farm there. Mm -hmm. They're just coming in, just, ah, there's a catfish farm around this mm -hmm. area. But there's a farm you go into. This farm is very big. They have, they have a lot of ponds in this area. But until you get to the place, you might not even know there is a pond there. Because one, it, it, also, it all boils down to your farm management. Yeah. So a lot of people, they, you see somebody tell you, ah, these my fishes have, for, they told me that I should not change their water for two weeks. And they'll be keeping the water. I wonder how will, <laughs> how will how? the fishes eat in that kind of water? I want them to grow. They can't really grow in that area. So it boils down to really your water management. Someone will tell you, they tell me I should remove... 50% of the water and top up 50% of the water. Just different theories, but now fishes will only eat when, if you see when the water is very neat, uh, the way they respond to feed, you, that should tell you that they, they like clean water. 
that alone should tell you that see these fishes they want clean water and they can't really survive in dirty water. And I've witnessed a farm whereby the person water was yeah. very dirty. Now, in the as the water was so dirty, they now feed fed the fishes bread on top of the dirty water. And they had a lot of mortalities and they lost virtually all the fishes in the pond. Now, because the oxygen level already is very low no. because of the dirty water. The oxygen level is water is dirty. Now, the little oxygen these fishes are trying to struggle with, you now use bread to block the small oxygen and they will just die because they need oxygen. Once your water is very dirty, the oxygen level becomes very low. That's why you notice the fishes will live down and come up and be gasping to try to see if they can get up. Because below the water, the oxygen level there has, is already very low. There's, there might be no oxygen in the down level because of the you know, the, 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 you feed them, the waste from the feed is still remaining in the water. It has polluted the water. It will go down. Now, even the fishes, you know, they also, uh, the, the excretors and everything is on top of that water with dust, dust particles that still perch on your water. So all these things will just reduce the oxygen level of your water and it really affects the fishes itself. And also the smell for those living around you. So I don't know if you guys have something to say to that on waste management in residential area. Well, I, I think you just answered um, the question. I I wanted us to um, do the questions, maybe all the questions later, and then because okay. there's one one part of the value chain that we've not um, touched on that I wanted okay. to touch on. You know, when it comes to catfish, the one one area that I'm trying to develop strongly and now do as as uh, say a full time, not full time, but add to my portfolios is consulting on catfish. You know, yeah. building ponds, training, um, yeah, building ponds and training you on how to give the catfish. You know, and providing technical support. That is one area that um also um get you a lot of money especially mm. in areas where you know in especially like in nigeria or in ghana by the way um if you're in nigeria um, i hope nigeria is closer to sierra leone right mm -hmm. yes so i get i yes i have i have a number of people who call me from sierra leone and then they want to start this cartridge business and i tell them look there's no way i can transport the fingerlings alone from here you know when it comes to building the ponds there's a way i can guide you guys and yes. you know help you uh, be able to yes. construct the ponds even if i'm not there but when it comes yes. to building and uh, getting the fingerlings over there's no yes. way i can do that so uh, maybe if we get places that are nearby if nigeria is nearby maybe we can look at helping because these are people also very passionate about starting cat yes. fish farms but you know there's no means of getting to them. So consulting on catfish farms, constructing of ponds, um, providing technical support, training of you know staff and other staff. That is also a very strong area that has catfish farmers yeah. that we can also engage in. Okay, like it's having some issues with its network, so. Okay, you're back. Yes, so sorry about that. So, yes, I'm back. So that's, as I was saying, that's one area that we can also engage or en encourage people to go into. But you know, you cannot consult for somebody if you don't do that thing yourself. <laughs> yeah. So you see, that is yeah. something that comes along 
after you have done this business for a while mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. after you have done this business for a while you've had a lot of experiences on the farm you've had a lot of you know uh, research done then you can say i want to also consult for people yeah. and i want to train yeah. people on how to do yeah. this thing and nobody you know in this business every day is a learning process every yeah. every stock you take is a new learning process no. every stock you yeah. take in is a new learning process for you so that's one one thing i wanted us to talk about Okay. So, like he said, consulting, it comes with experience, yes. yes. Without experience, you can't say you want to consult for people or you can't say you want to train people. You will have experienced a whole lot of failures that you would use in guiding people so as to ensure they don't make those mistakes when they start up. So, consulting comes with what experience, a whole lot of years of experience, years of research, years of so many things. So it's a very, very lucrative aspect. So if you would want to consult for people, then you have to start from the beginning. You have to experience, you have to go through a whole lot of things because people will ask you questions and you, you have to give them answers, valid answers, yeah. not answers. just anyhow. Yes, valid answers that to provide solutions. So it's a very good aspect to my bosses here, my consultants. <laughs> I consult them when <laughs> I consult them when <laughs> when I don't know what to do again. So yes, it's it's very key. Yeah, the consulting aspect is a huge area. Like there's a video I did on different value chain and added training as also a value chain. Because yeah. like we said, hash rate is a foundation. And when I say training is like the roofing. If you have the foundation <laughs> and there's no if there is, you have the foundation which is you have you got your finger length, there is no roofing in your building. If rain comes, it will scatter everything you have in the house. So no matter how mm -hmm. you have decorated your house, you've added furniture, electronics, if there is no roofing in that house, sun and rain will scatter the whole process if you have done. Now, yes. one thing I find somehow is a lot of persons now, first of all, they want to go into cartridge farm business. They'll get, maybe they'll get their finger in, they'll build their pond, they'll pull the fishes. Now, when that comes to a challenge, they'll not start calling you. Hey, I bought <laughs> fishes and they are not eating well. Now, this is, these are processes you should have done before you yeah. bought your, you start, you before you start the farm, you would have, okay, ah, I want to go into cattle farming. What and what is needed? And some people say, I watch your videos on you. Someone will just say, ah, I mean, you are a YouTube subscriber, so I watch your videos. Yes, those videos are guides. They can give you guides, but it, it does not really take the place of maybe a, a consult. That's because most times, on the process of shooting a video, there are a lot of things you might not see. Yes. There are a lot of things you have seen. And like uh, uh, Avon said, you learn every day. At each cycle, you learn. At each cycle, you learn. You might be doing cartridge for 10 years, and the next session you do, there is something new you just learned from what you just did that, that is different from you. It's the farm lady that said their fishes does not really obey rules. Fishes don't obey mm -hmm. rules. One of our videos, the fishes don't obey rules. You might be like, if you do this, do this, do this, you might come the next session and do this, do this, do this, and you see it gives you a different result from what you did the last time. So that's why if everyone needs someone you can consult to. Now, I was doing a training one certain time. I told them that at every cattle farmer should have a mentor. No matter even me as I'm here today, I have persons I still call on when it comes to the cattle farm. You, know, you are, not, you are not an island of ourselves. You have persons yeah. you see call, ah, this, this, and this. People say, I do this, do this, and do that. So at every point, if you have somebody you can call on to, okay, I need this, I need that to be done. Now, before we proceed, see talking about the training. Now, calling persons, do this, do this, do this, do this, it's not free. You know, a lot of persons, we like free things. Sometimes they're just like, ah, they say we should consult people. They say we should call them. And they want to call you on phone. Yeah, and sure. let's talk for one hour on phone. At the end of the one hour, they say, ah, thank you, thank you. Most times, it should not be done like that. Yes. <laughs> But when yes. I said that, someone will just it call you wrong. and you, it's very wrong. Over one hour on the phone, you are, your ear is training, you have been talking for one hour. It's okay, thank you, I'll get back to you. 
Are you like I just spent like one hour of my time answering a call? Someone will call you again. Almost one hour, and it should not. It shouldn't be so. Yes, and these are services these persons are rendering to you. So I feel for you to get them, it's help. You don't wait until the time that your fishes are facing a challenge before you now start running for who to call or who to assist you or who to guide you. Yeah, they play someone can you can ask a question and someone can just put you through. I I, I will do that. I, I, okay, do this, do this, and it goes. But before you go into, I said like if you are doing cash as a business, go into it as with business mentality. Before you go to any business, you have what they call the business plan. Like before, mm -hmm. someone might just come and say, I want to start 10,000 catfish business. Uh, what and what will it entail? I, will also, I might tell you over the phone. But recently, I, I stopped doing that. I'll tell you, if you want to go into 10,000 catfish business, you will pay and will draw a business plan for you. Exactly. I'll tell, I'll tell, I'll tell you, it's not free. You will pay me mm -hmm. for it. I'll draw a business plan. It's not, it's not, they just estimate. I'll say no. You will pay me to do the business plan, and I'm doing it. I'll give you both the price list and everything, the pawn you use, the pawn capacity. Let me give you a business plan. So after that, in between your sessions, because we can't be going to a business. Apparently, if you want to do a 10,000 farm in Nigeria, you are spending close to 6 million on feeding. Of course. You are doing a yeah. 10,000, about so you are spending close to 6 million on feeding alone. We are not talking about mm -hmm. your pawn you want to build. It's a different ball game altogether. So you can't be doing a business of six million, and you can't pay for somebody to assist you set up this plan. So it's not fair. So you should you should pay for that for those services. It, these services are not free. Like Daniel, he said to the last time we had it, he said, if you want to call me, these services are not free, and you should have it in mind. Now, yes, why we say it's not free because now this uh, process takes time. Now it's on different learning, different research. It takes internet. It takes time to get some of this information. It takes even traveling from one place to the other for you to learn some of the experience yeah. you have gathered over time to use to answer most of these questions. So it's not something you just wake up one morning and it just came to you. You move from one location. Yeah. I know how many farms are visited in Ibadan State already. Now, so it takes time. You go to different farms. As you are going to this farm, you see something different that you might use to guide the next farmer. So all these things... Uh, services that takes time to build. It takes, like a uh, family said, it takes experience. So it comes with experience. You don't, you, you, you don't bet the experience, you learn it. And it takes, it's not something you just get one day. It's over time you will get those experience. So the training and is a good area. And I advise anybody going to the country, go for training first. Go for knowledge. Now, knowledge will save you a lot harm. It will save you a lot of harm. It might be Yes, you know, you know, I won't say it might be expensive because most times the charges, most of the persons charge you for the training, most times are not even, will not really equate to what the services they will render to you at that time. Of course. It might not be something, okay, it's something, a stipend you are paying, but the knowledge you get will save you millions of naira than going into the business and losing those money because you just want to dodge a pay you, you would have paid at the beginning. So before you go for any capacity fund, do well to go for training, do well for, to go for guidance, and have somebody you consult at all the time. There are so many persons with proven track record. The farm lady is here, and from Henny is here. These persons are persons that have, proven, that have proven track record, yes. Because most times, I, if you go on Facebook, you see a lot of persons, if somebody drop a post, somebody will come and say, um, I started feeding my fishes 1.5 mm, what should I do next? <laughs> I, I know a lady, if you know the fruity farm, she'll be like, is it now you're not asking somebody what you do next at 1.5 kg? <laughs> you, went, you, went and you, bought with, you bought, you built a pond, you bought the fishes, you bought 1.5 mm, then you're not asking better what we do next. As in, on Facebook, people will not be commenting, feed them 2 mm, feed them, me, those kind of posts, I don't, I don't respond I don't, to them. I don't. I don't respond to those. I don't comment on those type of posts. I, I see it's negligence to what you did. You are not doing a business. If you get to, after oh, feeding one point five m to not know what you want to do next for your farm, it shouldn't be so. You should have understood from the beginning how to be, get in the pond, the type of pond you want, the type of feed you are going to feed them from start to finish, mm -hmm. even where to sell your fishes. All these things, you should know them before you even 
go and get the fingerlings. You should have them in place. Mm -hmm. You should have gone through, even if you don't really have the time for maybe going to a farm to learn, you might have somebody that can put you through all this, give you a, draw a business plan, you know, an estimate on how much you are going to spend, how much is your estimated profit. All these things should be what you should have handy before you go into the business. Because I've not seen anybody that wants to go into a business without a business plan. You are just heading for failure. Mm -hmm. uh, so man would say, if you fail to plan, you are just planned to fail. So I see a lot of farmers, they, they, they intentionally planned to fail in their business. Mm -hmm. They just plan and uh, this is, I'm going for failure without knowing. So we should, they should, first of all, have the basic understanding of why you want to go into farming, have it, somebody you consult for, in terms of even building the pond. Now, most times, some people feel building pond, you call a brick layer or a mason man to build a pond. Building a, 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 a fish pond is different from building a house. There are yeah. two different things they do. So you see, if you, someone say, ah, I built my pond and they are all leaking. Why won't they leak? Because if you call someone that has not built a pond before to do it. I spoke with a lady. Okay, a lady, she wanted to build earth pond. So she was like, ah, please let me help her supervise the earth pond. I said, who is coming to do it? He said that it's a... Uh, what do they call it? This uh, Fulani or Abuki guy that is coming to dig. I said, me, I cannot come and supervise that kind of work because as I have they done pond before, she said no. I said no, I'm not coming. We should look for somebody that is into building pond. You don't just come and supervise. They not dig. They only just come to dig the floor and go. They don't build pond. So all these things should be put into consideration before you go into the farm. So consulting is a huge aspect. A lot of farmers should or persons going to catfish farm as a business. So that's why the topic today is catfish business, not catfish farming. Catfish farming is different from catfish business. If you are doing catfish farming, you can be farming and farming and farming. If you make money, good. If you don't make money, but you are doing catfish business, that means you want to make money at the end of, of the course. day. So it's different from yeah. just doing farming in general. So yeah. I don't know whether you have anything to add, Mr. Form or the farm lady. No, I just feel like, you know, this this session has been very educative for anybody who is following or anybody who watched this later, you see, because though we are talking about the value chains, you see that we drop in some different um, topics as and when the discussion yeah. goes on. So there's a lot of things that we are covering here as we keep yeah. um, this, the discussion going. And this is what I want, you know, you just spoke about, you know, um, some services not being free. And I believe that as, um, let's say, um, leaders in this industry, this is, these are things we will continue to face from time to time. Because yeah. somebody will just call you and talk for, you know, one hour, one hour, 30 minutes, ask you every question in the world. And then at the end of the day, they just tell you, okay, so thank you, I'll get back thank to you, you later. And yeah, you, 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 you are like, okay, fine. So for me now, they're calling, I just, I just take it as part of the job. You know, when you call yeah. me and you want to ask questions, I just, I just commit myself to that because I feel like, well, you put your number online. What do you expect? Somebody is definitely <laughs> going to call you. And what I don't tolerate now is that people call you and they want to talk about things that, I mean, things that are not fan related or things that are not project specific mm -hmm. if you want to talk about your project fine if you want to talk about your farm business fine mm -hmm. but i can't engage you know personal stuff you know um, political stuff i have no interest in all of that and then the worst corporates are the people who call you outside your country you know like <laughs> nigerians who are living outside nigeria mm -hmm. and they call you and they yeah. want to talk about issues in nigeria, nigeria. i mean i mean <laughs> This is not the right place to discuss issues in Nigeria. We are just, if you call me, it is that you want to discuss a farm project farming. or something related to farming. So that is one. But I can't see, I can't see you taking a fee for for the calls too. I mean, I've thought about yeah. it, but that would not sound. Uh, it still sounds some way because already immediately you put your number out there and you are doing. Oh, yeah, yeah, you are already point. asking people to seek for help. Yes. What? The extent that we when we get to that, I'll begin to say I'm going to charge you. It's like, for instance, what you said. If you ask me for a budget, I'm going to charge money for that. 
if you mm. ask me to visit your farm, I'm going to charge money for that. If you ask me to do anything that is your project specific, that mm. will involve work outside my talking to you, that's going to attract a fee. So that's what I do. That's what mm. I do. At first, I used to do the budgeting for free or the estimates, the business plans. No, now I don't do that. Now, if you call me, if you need something that will be done outside me talking to you on the phone, then that one is going to attract a child. And you know, as as um, business people, too, we should put premium on our expertise. Look, um, I'm I'm kind of a Pan African um, activist too. So I have a problem with when we go outside our countries, and let's say we bring a white person that looks exactly um, like uh, Kenneth, your age, your height, everything. The kind of respect that we will give to that person as a catfish farmer is different mm. from the kind of respect people want to give Kenneth as a catfish farmer and I don't get it mm. because then mm. for all you know the experience that you have might even be more than what this guy has oh. but we don't put premium on ourselves so I get a little bit offended when people call me and then we talk about a price and they're like oh no it's too much it's too wide and I'm like look <laughs> don't respect my expertise. if you don't respect my expertise don't call me. Tell me that boss, let's negotiate about the price. Don't tell me it's too much. Because the knowledge that we have acquired, do you know how many fingerlings I have had to lose before I knew that you don't have to keep uh, fingerlings this way? People have no idea. I'm telling you. People have no idea. We have lost huge stock. Huge, huge stock. Huge one, amount. At one time, I lost 1,400 fingerlings because I just wanted to experiment on something. And the fishes kept dying, and I was still doing it because I wanted to see whether it would work. Until I got to a point where I found out that, okay, so if I do it this way, it will work. So when I'm coming to your farm, I'm coming to your farm with that expertise of preventing you from losing that 1,400 fingers. Of so course. if you can't pay me for that expertise, then, then there's no point inviting me to your farm. You have the farm, lady. You said it all. You said it all. Like, I get it a lot myself. People not wanting to pay. And being that I'm a, I'm a lady, people like a lady consult for me. You want to collect this amount? <laughs> <laughs> I sound what? People should learn that, <clears throat> or people should know that these are services that are, are premium. Because yes. this person is basically cutting down your stress or reducing right. your stress. Yeah. Exactly. So this person has experienced certain things and is definitely going to help you with avoid falling into those mistakes yourself. Mm -hmm. So be ready to pay. It's not too expensive. If you were somebody like um, Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg, People will say, yeah, because it's Mark Zuckerberg, um, I can pay $10,000. But because it's Kenneth, after many, she came me, they don't want to pay a huge amount of money to them, which they term as huge. Or people should know that these are services that are premium. These are services that will eventually help you what, become successful as a catfish farmer. So we should all learn to, I don't know, people who are watching or who would watch this later, always respect the expertise behind this whole thing it's not easy at all i've experienced in fact bad or unsuccessful production when it comes to hatching like there was a a year it was back to back i had no success at all hatching all through that year and then when the breakthrough came nobody saw what i went through you yes. get nobody saw the pain, nobody saw the sleepless night. So you should be ready to what appreciate these people who are ready to help you and shorten your I think her mic is off. Hello? Okay, maybe I'll be next to walk. So that is what okay. I feel. I think we've said the whole. Yeah, we said the whole. Yeah. So just take the three questions. 
Yeah. No, someone said something that uh, if I do a work for four minutes for you, you're not paying me for the four minutes I did that job. You are paying for the hours and the years I used to learn how to do the work in four minutes. So you're not just paying for the four minutes I did the job. You're paying for the years, the hours, the minutes I spent to learn how to do the work in four minutes. So you're not paying just like that from saying, the person is not just paying for what he's yes, doing. Sir. He's paying for the exactly. 1,400 pieces he lost. He's paying for the blue stock the most first will, will buy and will not give us good hashe. He's paying for a lot mm -hmm. we have already done in the past. So we are not just paying for that service. We are paying for the experience that comes with the services. Mm -hmm. So we just have a few questions here. This is on uh, the okay. one said, okay, some farmers recommend stocking only twice your target to make up to to make up for mortality can never be. What is the recommendation when stocking? Well, you should stock based on the capacity of your pond. Stock based on the capacity. I don't always like it when people say that uh, when you stock stock 2000 okay they will say that if your end result is having 1000 then stock 2000 1000 is will die it's more like a norm now it's more like a norm your fishes are not meant to die okay and then they are not meant to cannibalize to a very very terrible stage so, so if you are able to stock the right quantity in the right space and then feed them rightly, feed them the adequate quantity of feed. And I believe that you can tackle the issue of cannibalism and also the issue of mortality. So that is that stock based on the size of your pond. This question, okay, on, okay. If a cannibalism is a big issue, how often should we sort? I'm talking about in respect to sorting. Oh, you can hear me about the question. Say, cannibalism is a big issue. How often should we sort? Okay, for cannibalism, okay, like what uh, the farm lady said, she says, stock based on your pond capacity. Now, if you overstock your pond, that means you are setting up your fishes for cannibalism yourself. You set them up and say, yeah, tie it in yourself. So if you sort, if you stock with the right pond size, let's say if your pond capacity is 2,000 and you stock 2,000 fishes, now the rate of cannibalism, and you are feeding them, the rate of cannibalism will not be that much because fishes will not just start eating their self if they are, if they are not hungry. And, and if they are not hungry. So, but once you you underfeed, I see a lot of persons say, ah, feed price is high, is high, you they will now want to underfeed the fishes. So, you feed okay. them appropriately, stock with the right stocking density or the right stocking capacity for your pond. The rate of cannibalism will reduce drastically. Now, you're not saying you will not experience it. Yeah, you might experience it, but it might just be one or two, not in a very large volume. Yeah, so stock with the right capacity and stock and feed properly with the right feed, not just feeding them. Yeah, then you think giving your fish something that they will eat and feeding them well. Once they feed very well, they won't have time to look for who to eat and also sort your fishes properly. So if you have different irregular sizes in the pond, you're also setting them up for cannibalism. If you have some that are one kg, you have some that are 300 mm and 300 grams, grams. you have some that are 400, different sizes in one pond. That you you should cannibalism is sure in that kind of form. So you make sure that you sort. And there is something a lot of farmers do. You see, someone say, ah, I want to start 1,000 capacity pond, and the person will just buy one pond, or want to maybe construct just one pond and stock them in the in that time. I say now, when it's time for you to sort, where will you sort to? It, it's an issue. So most times I tell them instead of you buying one pond, as you should have an extra pond where you can sort. The smaller yeah. ones too. not just maybe because if you want to do 1000 capacity pond you now say okay you are going to buy a tampoline that or, or construct a concrete pond that can house just 1000 fishes it's not fair it's not ideal 
you should have an extra pond where you can sort your fishes into at any, at any given time. So that also will help you avoid cannibalism. Don't just go for one pond. At least have an extra pond, no matter the capacity of fishes you are doing. Don't stock with the exact capacity of pond you have. Yes. Is that from your mic is off? Yes, it's off. So I think the person was saying, how often should we sort? How okay. often? Okay, for the hatchery, sorting is a daily thing. It's a daily thing. You have your shooters almost every day when you come to your hatchery amongst your post fries. You see them, so you need your spoon and your scoop net to pick those ones out. Basically, what you need to do is reduce the water to a certain level and then sort. But when it's time to do general sorting, it might be twice or once in two weeks or twice in two weeks, depending on the quantity of or the capacity of your farm. So that can be done that way. And you can be doing it like um, almost every time, but picking out probably one or two shooters around can be every day, but the general sorting or total sorting where you drain out the water can be done once in two weeks so as to reduce the stress level. Then for the bigger fishes at the grow-out stage, you can sort your fishes and sort your fishes when you are draining your pond. Sort when you are draining and also ensure that you don't feed them when you plan sorting so as to reduce what the stress level as well. So that is that on how often to sort. Okay. So I wanted to add something to how often you sort when it comes to the grow out. If you are doing grow out, you know, okay. I normally advise that if you stock fingerlings, uh, maximum or latest after two weeks, you must look as you must start to sort them. So mm -hmm. let's say two, three weeks maximum. But that's where you do your first sorting. And then subsequent to that one, you can do them every three weeks or you can look at it. It depends. Sometimes, you know, you have fishes that if you sort them well and you have all of them in the same size range, it means that you're not going to do a lot of sorting from that one but um, as and when you see that there are some which are really becoming bigger than the other sizes and so on. but every the first sorting to be two three weeks then from that one you can look at the every month you look at sorting but in between that one month if you see a few one or two have become bigger or you mix them um they should have been in a bigger pond bigger size pond but they are in the smaller sizes pond they immediately move them especially if you are changing their water or something, they will move them to the bigger size one. So that's one thing that, um, that's about the uh, sorting and then when you should do that. Okay, thank you very much. Like the farm lady, maybe she, in her network, uh, maybe it's called network, so she would maybe join us. So it has been a wonderful, I don't know if you have any other, any other aspects in the value chain. No, I, I think that we have done justice to most of the um, yeah, yeah. the very important things that you the last the last value chain or that you can look at is maybe marketing of catfish. The agribusiness yes. and the business side of uh, marketing side of catfish, you know, selling yes. them whether smoked or fresh, you know, cooking them for sale. Because you know that there are some businesses that are springing up the point of kill business point and um, point and kill um, yes. is coming up very well in ghana for instance there are a lot of businesses that are springing up around that tech um, department so um you can talk about market women selling them we can talk about packaging and exporting them so that's all about the marketing side of that fish that people can yes. get into uh -huh. so smoking packaging and exporting whether yeah. um, selling fresh, whether selling to restaurants, whether selling to market men, or whether selling them on your own. So the, the marketing of catfish is also one um, value chain that people should can also look at. You don't wreck catfish, but you have avenues where you can sell the catfish. 
we can equally get into that business of you know buying from the people who read the catfish and then selling to so you start becoming a middleman and um, selling catfish from and then you can make a decent um profit you know that people now some smart people are coming up i had a call from a lady she just watched my videos she doesn't sell catfish she doesn't know a thing about catfish but being a business savvy person she just took some pictures of catfish you know the short videos that i put together on my social media platform and my status and then she also put it out there that she's selling catfish now people are calling her now she's also calling me and i thought <laughs> i thought look this lady is a recommendation because that, that's yeah. a smart person right there she doesn't need to rear catfish before she starts selling, selling back, she just saw it and she thought there'll be a great business idea yes and now she's selling catfish but she doesn't have a pump she doesn't know how much feed it costs but feed all cost. she knows is that she has a market she's making money she has a market yes she has a market that she can take it from me and sell it at a margin you know to these people and for me i like mm. so they, these are businesses that people can also look at and engage in as uh, serious people yeah that, that's a good that's a good avenue when it comes to the country business now the middlemen aspect and uh, there are a lot of people they, are, they work they are just the middlemen they come to farmers they buy they go to retailers they sell now they don't really stress themselves to know whether the fish is feeding well if the fish is not feeding well it's not their business they come to your farm you bring out the scale you scale for them they go to the market women they sell to them like the question someone asked earlier about how to sell the smoke fish now there are a lot of persons okay there was a friend of mine that called that was yesterday yesterday on saturday that, that she wants to go into selling roast, uh, smoked catfish she wants to go into the business her own is she comes pick it and sell to where she works her organization she sells to staff around and she can use, sell through her contacts on WhatsApp and through a social media platform. Now she's into the catfish value chain. She does not own a pond. She does not care how much feed costs. She owns how much will you sell the, the smoked catfish to me? How much am I able to sell it to the customers I have and I make my profit from it? That's also a value chain where a lot of persons can go into and make money. And also the barbecue also. I have a friend, he started a barbecue, was it this last week? He asked, but he, he has a pawn also. So but he opened the barbecue uh, joint, yeah, they, they, they do the fish, people come there to eat. Now, since you are the one that owns the fish, so you have no saving costs because normally if you, if you own a barbecue shop, you are buying from the farmers or from the middlemen and the price is a bit higher. But since you own the farm, you are, set, you are getting the price of the fishes at a low cost. So your price on the barbecue can even be cheaper than other outlets because you are getting the, your fishes at a lower rate. So it's also a value chain a lot of persons can go into. Now, that's why this discussion is called the catfish farm, catfish business. No, the business is all about making money, making profit. Now, you might, you might not have the time to go into hash rate, you might not have the patience and the time to go into the grow out. You might not have the money to do the feed production. You might not still have the, the, the available uh, expertise to dry or smoke. But you can have the contact, you can have the network to sell to. Then you can just pick from those that are doing it and help them to sell and make the profit in between. So that's also an avenue so many persons can also make money from the catfish and business. So there, it's, a, it's a broad business. Like what I said, if we start talking about the different areas, one can make money from catfish business and you want to talk about it exhaustively, you can, it's, it's a session you can spend 15 hours and you have not really finished talking about it. So, but it has been a good one. We've, we've, we have been a good one and we have touched a lot of uh, different areas and I want to still thank Mr. Olad Gunju Daniel. He's also a YouTuber in the cartridge farm business and also into different agro products. He has been with us in this session live. He has been commenting. We had a live session recently also. So thank you, Mr. Daniel, and for the great work you are also doing in the cartridge farm industry. So, also, okay, we have a question here before we go. You say, 
why can't farmers concentrate on production techniques and domestic market, which is very huge? Exports should be the least of our issues. So he's talking about the local market and maybe exports should not really be one of the issues for the Cartesian business. Yeah, yes, the, the, the local market in Nigeria is huge already. We, like a video you did, the farm lady, you talked about even our production in catfish cannot even meet up the demand presently here in Nigeria alone. We have, we have a huge yeah. gap when it comes to production in Nigeria. We, we, we still have a shortfall in terms of the farmers and the production we do. So if you want to sell only in Nigeria alone, the market is big. It's a huge market whereby you can, you, you are not looking for customers, you must always have customers. I've not gone of to course. any farm and the person is telling me, ah, I don't know where to sell my fishes. Except it's just you are a lazy farmer because if you have done your homework right, where to sell should not be your problem. If you do your homework well, the issue might be pricing. Ah, this person is not pricing well. So this person is pricing well. So that's why price regulation should be enforced. Like what your state did, I implore other states in Nigeria should still meet together and see how they can regulate their prices in terms of sell. If such can be done in different areas, how they can regulate their prices and enforce those prices. And say, okay, this is what we want to sell because of the high cost of feed. At least you see that the market will be favorable for everybody that wants to go into it if prices could be a bit regulated for farmers so that the market men or the middlemen don't come and regulate or predict price for you. They can't say, ah, if you're not selling this price, I'm not buying. Because they know if they go to the next farm, the person can just decide to sell at a lower cost. But if all farmers, they, are, they have a, a unity price, and say, okay, this is what we are selling. If you move from A to B, it's the same price. B to C, it's the same price. You just have to stick to one customer, or the difference might just be little also. So it has been a wonderful session, and we have had a lot of discussion that have touched different areas in the cartridge farm business. I know a lot of persons that have joined the session from the beginning and up to this point have learned a lot. Most persons will still watch the video maybe after the session because of different time zones and stuff like that. But I know it's... You, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a session that will really impart a lot of persons that want to do well in the catfish farm industry. So, so uh, I want to thank Mr. Afwam for, having, for joining us in this session. Your contribution has been enormous. Your channel, your channel has been growing. We've, we, we will get there very soon. <laughs> I saw your video on, the, on your 10K followers <laughs> and subscribers. Yes. We'll get there. We are coming. Yeah. <laughs> We are, we are coming <laughs> gradually. We we'll, we'll, we'll all get there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And our boss lady, the farm lady. Okay, guys. Are, thank, you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So we we'll just say a word of greetings as we shut down for the night. It has been a wonderful session and very impactful and interesting. I enjoyed the session. I've learned a lot from having this session with you guys and. Hopefully, we'll still be doing more of this and more of this discussion as time goes on. Yes. So, the okay, so thank you all yeah. for having me. And thank you, everybody, for being on the um, screen. Uh, we hope to do this again. Hopefully, maybe we can do this every other month. Or maybe yeah. if we have a regular time that we can do a discussion together like this. I think that will benefit everybody. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Catfish Farm Enterprise from Nigeria, Afomene from Ghana. Yeah, this is Africa here doing something great. So it's amazing yeah. to be here. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. Thank you, viewers at home. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and before we go, Goodbye. this month is our is the farm lady's best month. On the hey. 15th of August is our birthday. <laughs> So she will be, she yeah. be hosting us this month for our birthday. So please, family, tell us the venue we'll be celebrating the birthday on the 16th of August. <laughs> Thank you so much. Where is the venue for the birthday celebration? <laughs> Accra, Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you Mr. Paul, you'll be hosting us in Ghana for the birthday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you have not answered. I say yes for him. <laughs> Accra, Ghana. Na. I'll be hosting you in Accra, Ghana. So get your oh. passport ready. Yes, yeah, so we're taking a flight down there. No, no, no problem. On the 15th, let me, let me go and mark my calendar. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for having for the for the program, for your time. It's, you know, you. Uh, most times the weekend is already choked up, but we made it available to be around for this time. So it's a good one, and we'll see where to have something like this in time to come. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for the viewers. For joining us in this okay, session, guys, for those bye -bye. that brought their comments, their observation, we like you. So bye bye. Have a wonderful weekend and happy new bones to you all. Bye. Bye. Welcome to Foam TV. My name is a Foam Green. Hi, it's Shikemi, Olavisi, the Foam Lady, and you are welcome back to another amazing, interesting, and educative video. <laughs>